Hey everybody, Jeremy here. Just picked up this 73 Dodge Coronet. Um, I want to make this a cop car, but we'll see. I mean, look at the license plate, DEA. This, this thing is meant to be a police car. It's not too bad. It does have some dents and whatnot here and there. Has some rust, but overall it's really not bad. It does have the cool seat, the bucket back split bench just plain gauges but hey i know somebody that has a whole bunch of rally gauges um already has the cop wheels i think that front end is really aggressive looks like a good cop car dual mirrors anyway what do you guys think i should do with it for now i'm just gonna load it up and take it to the yard We're loaded and ready to go. There's really cool lines for a four door. So the 73 is unloaded here at the yard and it is a really cool car and has great potential for being a police car, which it still may end up being. Uh, but then something happened. I found another one. So this one is a 1971, which has the cooler grill, which is hard to see here. It also has the cooler marker lights. On top of that, it's white with black interior. And uh, check this out. It's a 383 Hypo car. Real deal, 383 Hypo, 71 Cornet four-door, white with black interior. And then if you come over here, there's just kind of a weird stripe across the top here. Just this kind of line with some holes right here. And a hole that was filled in from an antenna. So, I'm just gonna take a wild stab that there's a good possibility that this one is a real deal police car. How cool is that? Now, just hoping to get it out. So I'm back to the yard with this one. Um, I would have loved to film pulling it out of the hole that it was in since 1984. However, the gentleman that owned the yard would rather that I didn't film there. So um, other than what you just seen, uh, I didn't film anything there. And uh, as I speculated, this was a cop car. It is verified that this was an actual police car. The VIN number is WK41N0A, uh, or sorry, N1A. Uh, the K specifically stands for police car. Um, and then the N is 383 Hypo. It's a Lynch Road built car, which is what the A is. One is the uh, year, 1971, etc. So this car actually was a real police car. 
And there's a couple really cool things that we'll go over later that show also that it was a police car. I have yet to get in the trunk and I'm hoping that I'll get to shortly. I'll probably have to drill it out because we can't find the keys. Uh, it does have eight and three quarter rear end under it, which is pretty typical for a 71 uh, B body. Did have dual exhaust. You can see that the uh, mufflers are all coming apart. Uh, the frame rails on this car is actually pretty solid. However, the uh, quarters and rockers are gonna need some help. The car has 11 inch drum brakes on the front, which you can't see with the wheels. It does have the sway bar. Um, this car was built to uh, be a police car, obviously, go fast. Um, I'm gonna get it unloaded off the trailer and then we'll go over some more cool stuff about it. Uh, this car is awesome. I'm actually really pleased to have it here. So we got it unloaded, which was kind of a pain. We had to use the forklift, unfortunately, just because it doesn't roll, but it's unloaded. And sitting next to the 73, sure would make a cool duo of police cars. Uh, something really cool and I've got to get it out. I can't get the rear doors open, but I lifted the back seat and there is the build sheet right there. So that is awesome. Um, after I get all my tools out, I will uh, pull that out and show it to you guys. So another really cool thing about this car, um, one, is you can see it was a radio delete car but it's kind of hard to see with the camera right here certified speedometer tall tail signs right there that it was a police car for sure so awesome so excited about this ugly old thing but i don't know i just love it so anytime you find a build sheet, it's kind of unique. Um, I mean, it's individual to that car. You've got to be really careful to try to get it out without damaging it. Oh. You just have to kind of lift the springs. Pull the paper away from the springs and voila. So there it is. And uh, I'm gonna take it home to flatten it out where I will kind of show you guys um, different coats on it. But as you can see here, it does say heavy duty front and uh, oil gauge then there's a couple other things up here um, basically this tells you everything about the car so it's really kind of cool so we'll uh, talk about that more later that grill is so awesome looking um, 71 only anyway uh, what I wanted to show you here uh, also shows cop car so look at the size of that alternator i mean that thing is huge um so big in fact they had to put a bracket from the alternator bracket clear back to the back of the block just for stability um there's also the added uh box right there for power uh there's no doubt that this car was a police car at some point in time um just such a cool car with awesome history uh, the car has an Idaho title, so I believe that it was probably an Idaho police car, but I don't really know where. Uh, I'm going to clean the car out, and I'm going to make it a roller. Uh, I'm going to put four wheels and tires that hold air and whatnot on it. Uh, but I've been talking to a couple people, and because this car is a real police car, uh, and it has kind of that historical significance... There's lots of people that really like old police cars. I think I'm going to sell it. Um, I can't keep everything. You know, the, we are a business here at DD Auto Salvage. And as much as I'd love to keep this car, 
I think I'm going to let somebody that appreciates it for the historical significance purchase it and restore it. I am, however, going to keep the blue car for now and going to make that one into a police cruiser that we can use just for fun um, and then possibly run out to productions. Uh, that 72 Charger Rally right there, that car is getting parted out. Um, the reason I'm pointing that out is it has a rear sway bar and some other cool suspension stuff that we could probably use on this one just to make it handle a little better. Um, but back on that one, the 71, that car is going to be listed for sale. So if anybody is interested in it, uh, my email is in the description and let's talk. It does have a title, has the build sheet, which we're going to go over here in a little bit, some of the codes and whatnot. The only thing I'm going to do to it, I'm going to leave it dirty. I'm going to leave it exactly as found other than uh, I'm going to make it a roller. So basically free, get, free up all the brake drums and I'm going to put four wheels and tires on there that are all matching and hold air so that it looks better and it rolls onto a trailer. Um, I also... I looked in the trunk just by pulling the seat. There's nothing in there, so I'm not even gonna worry about opening the trunk up. Um, it's just gonna be sold as is, as found, other than what I just stated. So that way, any treasures or anything that the next buyer finds, that's on them. Um, anyway, then all you guys have probably seen the New York episodes. Um, these are the cars. We're just waiting on paperwork for them. As soon as the paperwork comes back from Utah State, uh, we're going to be listing a lot of them for sale. Uh, there's also one that uh, we just picked up that you guys haven't seen. Uh, this is a little 69 Barracuda Fastback. It's a Slant 6 automatic. It's a complete car other than shortly before we purchased it, a uh, tree limb came down in a windstorm and hit the back window so it's complete other than that uh, but that car is going to be listed for sale shortly so this is the build sheet out of the police car now this build sheet will pretty much tell you everything you need to know about this car uh, the way it works is the same way as a fender tag works. If you guys are familiar with the fender tag, you'll see the A codes. Well, this is going to have all the A codes and the B codes and the C, etc. So A codes would be like right here. Um, you might see like on the fender tag A11. Well, that would have an 11 right here, which is like a light package or something like that. You've got B11 here, which is, I believe, heavy duty drum brakes. Uh, and you'll see that on the fender tag. But there's also a lot of other things here. And there's several different places online you can find uh, the codes and whatnot. Uh, but one of the easiest ones are these books right here. This is by Galen Govier. And these books are awesome. Uh, they fit in your pocket. So when you're out like going through a junkyard or something, they're really cool. Um, and they're just really easy to use. You got all the codes, everything here. So this is what I'm going to use in this situation um, on this particular build sheet just to kind of show you a few things. I'm going to actually start right here. Well, first I'm going to show you. So this is the VIN number here. So that's going to match the VIN number on the dash. It's going to match the VIN number on the fender tag. And then you've got the body numbers on like the core support and the trunk drip rail. And all of those numbers should match the last six digits here. Um, as well as like the VIN number and fender tag are going to have that full. And then if you have other documentation such as a uh, window sticker and stuff like that, that's all going to be there. This is the order number here. This is going to be on the fender tag as well. Um, as you can see, I mentioned uh, K, which is right here in the VIN number, but also the order number on police cars starts with a K as well. Most of them are going to be a number. And this first part is like a dealer number. Um, and then the rest of it is just individual for that vehicle. Uh, you'll also see some that have an M as in Mary. That means like manufacturer use, promo, advertisement, stuff like that. 
Uh, then you've got over here, you've got the U. That means it's a U.S. specification. Uh, you can also find them with like a C or a number uh, for different places. And then right here, so you're going to see Y35, Y14, and Y39. So Y14 is special order. And then Y39, I'm pulling it up in the book to see. Um, Y39 is a special order car. Y14 is sold car. And then Y35 is bid. Now, I'm not for sure what that means, but uh, so this was a special order sold uh, lease car, I guess. So it was probably because it was a police car, it was probably leased to them um, through some sort of program through the state or something like that. Um, also, you're going to see like the colors here. You've got um, these are the interior colors, I believe. And then the body color, which is GW3, which is white. And then the K2, I believe, is monotone or single. So um, just kind of showing you how these work. Um, also, so you're going to notice here, this one has a lot of stuff for fleet. So it's an F code. So you got like F58, F95, which right there is the calibrated speedometer. Um, then you've got like roof light reinforcement. So I'm assuming underneath the headliner, it's going to have something like some sort of support. And then it had different like for a spotlight. So 33 and 35. So let's look in the book real quick just for fun. Again, these are Galen Govier's books. You can find them on eBay. You can purchase them directly from him, I believe. Um, so we're going to look up real quick for the spotlight. F33, F35. So you pull this open and you've got f33 f35 so this one came from the factory with uh left and right hand pillar spotlights so that's kind of cool and those are gone now but the um build sheet shows that it did have them um then you've got so the alternator i pointed that out in the video that's f15 so you got the one here and then the five right there so f 15 in the book is a 65 amp alternator so big time um, then you've got all sorts of other things you've got like the dual exhaust here in the end codes um, you've got the fan the fast throttle and i'm not sure what n 98 let's look what n98 is so pull the book back out so there's actually n98 was literally just a label for the exhaust emissions so um so some of this stuff is like really basic but it tells you pretty much everything about the car as I already pointed out, it's got it stamped right here. Heavy duty front and rear, it looks like. I can't read the whole thing, um, but that's what I'd assume it is. Heavy duty front and rear. Um, I've never seen that stamped on a build sheet before. I've had a lot of build sheets, still have a collection of a lot of build sheets, and I've never seen that on any other one. So pretty cool to break it down. Uh, like I said, there are places, if you have your build sheet off of your Mopar, and I'm sure Ford and Chevy are the same thing. They have build sheets and you can probably look online and find all sorts of different resources um, to decode those. Uh, I do want to say that these are very important to the car. They are individual to your car. So like I said, it's got the sequence number there. You do want to protect these. I mean, this piece of paper, for instance, like it says right there, G Series 1971. This is literally a 50-year-old piece of paper that's been stashed underneath a seat in the seat springs for 50 years. Um, so you want to take care of them. I actually already had it in a protector, uh, just one of these sleeve protectors like this. And I was going to leave it in that, but the glare was too bad, so I couldn't see it. So I had to pull it back out. I'm putting it right back in there right now very carefully, and that's that's where it will stay for as long as I own the car. 
um, and then I'll pass it on to the next person and they can do what they want with it. But these are really cool pieces of paper with a lot of information and they're just kind of fun to have with the car. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You will see a little bit more of this car and you'll see a lot more of the blue Coronet. Um, again, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting me. Uh, again, any feedback on how to make my episodes better, please let me know. Uh, right now I'm doing all my filming and all my editing and everything on an iPhone. I've been trying a couple different microphones. I'm not sure how I like them. The last video seemed a little crackly to me. But I am working on different things. Uh, people have mentioned fast forward or making it so that certain things are faster. I've been doing some of that with time lapse. Uh, anyway, again, I'm going to keep working. I want to make these videos as entertaining and um, worthwhile as possible. I want to be able to show you guys things like what I just showed you. How to do stuff with these uh, build sheets and fender tags. Um, and then just little tips here and there. Uh, Anyway, again, thank you very much for your support and for your views. I really appreciate it, and I uh, hope that you guys continue watching. Um, please like and subscribe. Also, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Little things on all of those as well. Um, and have a great day.